caught you. Keep quiet. Either you stop or I'll stop you. We'll all go together. She's just trying to scare us. Well, she has. Kill my goat. Belt her. Sure. Shall I get a rope? Oh, come on, you coward. Well, all right, I'm coming, but I'm not going to look. Here, Goaty. Billy, Billy, Billy. I'm not going to hurt you, believe me. You haven't seen a goat, have you? A goat? What goat? Well, it's a little billy goat, and it sounds about that tall. No, it wasn't. It was a... It was the nanny goat. I remember now because it had... No, it wasn't. She had a beard. Now, how do you explain that? I can't. Why all the yelling and screaming? Do I have to have a reason to yell and scream? I'm sorry we bothered you, mister. Who's this? <laughs> now we know where she picks up all those creeps she brings to the house. Yeah. I didn't like that. I didn't need it. <laughs> are you just going to stand there and let him knock me down? Hey, look, are you in the habit of hitting ladies? I'm more in the habit of hitting gentlemen, if I have to. Well, you heard him. You're in no danger. Oh, help me up, you coward. You just kept your mouth Oh, up. shut up. Well, and you shut up, too. And as for you, let me tell you... I'm getting out of here. I hope he strangles you. Look, we can't just let her run around the neighborhood alone, can we? You know, that's the most wonderful thing anybody's ever done for me in my whole life. What was? The way you flattened Cordelia. I never touched her. She must oh, have tripped Oh, no her. need for false modesty with me. I saw the whole thing, and I thought you were just wonderful, and I thank you very much. Well, I guess I'd better go and find my goat. Just a minute. Was there really a goat? Well, of course there was. And I'll tell you something else. If Cordelia finds him first, that means she beats me again. Did she beat you before? Well, sure, she did last year. I would have won the scavenger hunt with a porcupine, only I was disqualified because one of the judges sat on it. Well, what are you looking at me like that for? Was he hurt? No, oh, we sent him back to the zoo. Who, the judge? Don't you know what a scavenger hunt is? Well, a scavenger hunt is where everybody goes out and looks for three things. Something mineral, something vegetable, and something animal. And they've got to be sort of silly, useless things that nobody wants. I see. And the first one back with all three wins. Wins what? They win the honor of winning. Oh, my mother is famous for her scavenger hunts. She has one every year at a charity ball, and then we give all the money to charity. That is, if there's any left only, there never is. And now you know the whole setup. Well, one or two. You know, I have the frame of an old bicycle. That's mineral. And I've got 5,000 yards of dental floss. That's vegetable. And I have this goat. That's animal, you know. Only occurred... You wouldn't want to make $10, would you? Doing what? Oh, I'm sorry. 
I didn't really mean anything. You know, that's one of the biggest problems in my life. I'm always saying something before I realize what it is I really want to say. And then everybody gets mad at me and... Well, I'm sorry. Good night. <laughs> that animal that's still missing. I was just thinking that perhaps I might get by on account of my, um... Oh, you'd be a smash, honey. I couldn't ask you after what You're you did. You're not asking me. I'm asking you. Are you really? Well, then, in, in that case, come on. Sorry, you're man. sorry. How do you think I feel? Oh, Howard, Hi. have you seen Cordelia? No, I haven't. I thought she was with you. Heaven forbid. I think I like to, your mother's parties better the way she used to have them. With the scavenger hunt last. Oh, yeah, well, she had to change that. Because last year, some of the couples who went out hunting didn't get back for days. <laughs> Come on. Where did they go? Well, I certainly hope you don't think I was going to ask them. Come on. Oh, everybody's dressed. Well, that's only because it said so on the invitation. Mother! Irene, is this your monkey? No, look what I found. I know who he belongs to. He's been trying to pull my zipper. Who do you belong to? To whom do you belong? Uh, who is that? Oh, this... What's your name? Godfrey. This is Mr. Godfrey, and I win the game. That's mineral, this is vegetable, and Mr. Godfrey is a... Um, he's my entry in the third category. Go on up on the platform where they can see Oh, you. no, you don't. People aren't animals. But that were the case, everyone here would have at least one something animal before the hunt even started. <laughs> there are a great many animals, madame, that are almost human, and uh, vice versa. Now, I, look here, I've known the difference between people and animals for a long, long time. Mother, there's Charles Darwin. Where? Where is he? <laughs> he wrote a famous book about certain specimens. Oh, of course, I've read that, but that doesn't mean I have to agree with everything the man says. Mother, you let Godfrey up on the platform. All right, we'll put it to a vote. Attention, please. How many here think that we are animals? Please raise your right hand. I do. I do. Of course we are. Sure we are. Sure. We're all animals. I don't believe we made allowance for that, or have we been how, how many points are monkeys? Ninety. Well, then Godfrey must be at least a hundred. <laughs> yes, I expect he must be. Announcement! Announcement! Oh. Ladies and gentlemen! Oh, Vincent, you do it. Ladies and gentlemen, as the first contestant to score 150 points, the winner of tonight's scavenger hunt is Miss Irene Bullock. Congratulations, oh. <laughs> You see how you can do things if you just Thank put you. your mind to it. Thank you. Oh, where's James Thank and the champagne? You. I haven't seen James all evening. Don't you remember? He quit. Oh, yes, of course. Donnie, can you imagine? James left us just because I asked him to feed Mrs. Bolden's horse. I don't see why he objected. We've got plenty of food. Uh, 
Oh, Godfrey. Oh, you must be hungry. You come with me. Would you excuse me, please? I'm sorry. Is Godfrey your first or your last name? Both. Godfrey, Godfrey. What's your middle initial? G. Or? Uh-huh. Interesting. You know, you never realize what, what a milestone tonight is in my life. Really? Oh, yes. To finally beat Cordelia at something after just years and years of trying. And don't you think I'm going to forget who I owe it all to? Well, I'm a man who believes that the more milestones there are in somebody's life, the better. Ah, uh, there you see. It just goes to show you that the more ragged and tattered a man is... Oh, I'm sorry. The more likely he is to say something that you can quote. Be careful of these toothpicks. Everything has a toothpick. Now, Cordelia, you're too late. It's all over. I read one in the game. You little monster. Well, it certainly isn't my fault. Hi, Cordelia. You know Godfrey. We won. He's my animal. Why, you no good cheat. Why, Cordelia, what a peculiar way to speak to your sister. And why are you so late? Ask her. She wrecked my car. She did what? Well, you certainly took your time getting here tonight. I've been here for five hours. We had dinner together, don't you remember? I thought that was yesterday. Doesn't oh. anybody care Irene smashed up my car? You bet I care. I'll tell you another thing. That man she's with knocked me down. Well, she had it coming to her. She called him a creep. Now, you know what you said you'd do to her the next time she was rude to someone? You bet I remember. I said... I. Hey, it was you I said that to. It was not. It was me. And I've never been so humiliated in my life. You said it was stupid of me to go to the opera and weather like this without wearing long underwear. You said that to me and in front of all those people. Humiliating? I don't know what is, especially at a benefit. You never even sent them a check. What about my car? No, honey, they want money. Oh. Oh. Um, 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 Mr. Uh, Godfrey? Godfrey? Just exactly where do you think you're going, Mr. Godfrey? Well, I was under the impression the game was over and you'd won. So since my small part in it was concluded... But you didn't even get your ten dollars. Oh, don't bother. That's all right. It is not all right. Oh, I know you're shocked and disgusted and you've never met people like us. That's it, isn't it? As a matter of fact, I had a very selfish reason for wanting to help you. Since the venture was mutually profitable, nobody owes anybody anything. Good night. Wait a minute. Here it is, your money. I knew it had to be somewhere. Oh, it's a 20. I don't have any change. Oh, that's right. You can pay me back some other time. As soon as I get a job. <gasps> oh, what a perfect butler you'd make. With your voice and your beard and everything. And it's very obvious that somewhere along the line, you come from a family that had at least nice table manners. You offering me a job? Well, didn't you hear Mother say that our butler James quit on account of some horse that wouldn't eat or something? I don't recall that. Well, of course, we could only pay you 250 a month. $250? Oh, I know that isn't very much, but there are some months that are very short. Now, you take February, for instance. It has only 28 days. Of course, there's leap year, but leap year comes only once every four years, and that shouldn't bother you very much. Still, it's things like that that prey on a man's mind. Oh, not yours. I took psychology at finishing school, and ever since then, there's been no stopping me as far as people are concerned. For instance, it's very, very clear to me that you're not at all what you pretend to be. I haven't pretended to be anything yet. You haven't given me a chance. My guess would be that you're um, a writer of some sort and that you were hanging around under that bridge gathering background material for a, a book or something that you're writing. Ah, <laughs> well. <laughs> I can see there's no point in trying to hide anything from you. Well, now, you see, what did I tell you? But if I am that, why would I be taking a job as your butler? You're going to take it? Hasn't it occurred to you that I might very easily be a, be a dope peddler or a murderer? Oh, no. You're not the kind of man that would ever come easily to, Mr. Godfrey. And anyway, if you really did it, I'm quite sure they had it coming to them. Who? Whoever you murdered. Well, it was just that little old lady I strangled for her money, you know. Oh, well, we don't have any little old ladies at our house. So you can start in the morning. What about the rest of your family? They got nothing to say about this? Well, they'd better not say anything. What with all I've got on all of them. And we can work out the other details later. I'll see you in the morning, Mr. Godfrey. Just a minute. Yes, anything else? I'll take that job. Well, you already did, didn't you? Well, thank you very much anyway, and I'll work very hard to justify your faith in me. You will? Really, I will. Good night. Good night.
morning. What? I'm the new... The uh, new butler. What else? Well, I could be the tax collector or the milkman or... Not in this house at this hour. I can set my watch by the new butler arriving every morning. Woo! Somebody hit the jackpot this time. Somebody gave me a clean shave this morning. You should have seen me last night when Miss, uh, Miss Irene offered me the job. Oh, I do believe that, dear girl. It's beginning to develop some taste. My name's Molly. I'm Godfrey. Well, I've seen places like this in magazines. I never thought they really existed. Excuse me, your license plate is showing. Oh, oh, hang on to it. You might get a refund when you return the suit the same day. I plan to use it for quite a while. Where are my uh, quarters? Don't be a dreamer. You just barely even need a place to hang your hat. Our turnover in butlers here is so fast, why, I've known them to come through that door, pick up a tray, go through that door, get fired, and keep going right through the front door. Time lapse, two and a half minutes. Our month's first day, a word of encouragement is always welcome. Who's that? Madame Butterfly. Or as she is referred to by her friends, poor Angelica. Oh, that's the one with the monkey. Yeah. Did you catch that when you said the one with the monkey? Any normal person would have screamed, monkey, what monkey? Me, after 15 years, I just nod and say, yeah. Believe me, it frightens you. Well, why do you stay on? I like to sleep late. I like to feel like a lady of leisure. And if there's one thing you can count on in this house, it's that nobody gets up before noon. Not even Mr. Bullock? Mm. He has breakfast at the office. He says an hour away from home is an hour added to his life. <laughs> I got the impression last night that he was comparatively sane. He is, but they're getting him. <laughs> well, shouldn't I go and see what she wants? Not until the third buzz. She's not actually conscious yet. She's in a sort of half twilight stage inhabited by pixies and little men playing glockenspiels marching up and down her chest. What does she take? Oh, anything that will stomp out the fire and put the pixies to rout. I think I know just the thing. You do, do you? You don't know anything. You're about to embark upon something you'll spend the rest of your life trying to forget. Give her a little drop of these. And then maybe a touch of that. And perhaps... That's going too far. Oh, well. Coming. Now we stir it. And hope for the best. Now, where's her room? Second floor, last one down the right hall. And Miss Irene? At the head of the stairs to the right. The old one will get you groggy. The young ones always deliver the knockout blow. <laughs> Molly, I don't know any of them very well, but I do think that at least Miss Irene has what I would call a big heart. She's got a straight cat complex. No offense, Miss. Oh, that's all right. But have you ever thought how many stray cats there are in the world these days? And how impossible their lives would be if it weren't for a few stray cat collectors like this girl? Madame, there is. Are you friendly? One of the most friendly, madame. Oh, good. Oh. Do you hear that music? Quite clearly, madame. You do? You're the only one who ever has. Some of us are more sensitive than others. How oh, true. How very true. And how very well you, you put it. Don't mention it, madame. Have we met before? I am the new butler, madame. Oh, yes, of course. We found out that James absolutely despises horses, and that's one thing I won't put up with. Oh, there you are. What's that? Pixie remover. Oh, then you see them, too. Oh, we're old friends. Oh, you mustn't step on them. I don't like them, but I don't like to see them stepped on. I'll be very careful, madame. I... I wouldn't hurt them for the world. Uh, 
Oh, well, what, well, what am I supposed to do with this? Drink it, madame. It will bring everything back into its proper perspective. It will? Really? Without a doubt. <coughs> oh. You know, I... I was enjoying our little talk. We can only hope that there will be many, many mornings and many such little talks. I hope so, too. But then you, I don't even know your name. I do think it's important that people should know each other's names. That is, of course, if they have pleasant names. I knew a woman once named Harry Rogers, you know. Used to depress me all day just to think about it. Oh, there, now you see, I've thought about it, and I'm all depressed. Oh. <laughs> you'd like to scream, go right ahead. Mrs. Bullock is the first woman I've met in years with whom I felt an immediate understanding. You don't feel as if your brain's been eaten away a little? So far, I haven't noticed. I think I'd worry if I were you. Miss Irene? Next cage to the left. Any, um, any hints on how to handle her? Oh, there's nothing to it. If you understand that early Aztec language she speaks. Come in. You didn't have any right to do that without first talking it over with me. I love that beard. When in Rome, one must wear one's face the way the Romans do. Are you a Roman? No, I'm an Austrian, miss, and I eat your breakfast. Did you have a kangaroo when you were a little boy? Well, you must be thinking of Australia. Well, you could have one here if you wanted to, you know. Yes, I'm sure I could, but it wouldn't be quite the same somehow. Would you excuse me? No, I don't want to excuse you. Sit down. Wouldn't it be better if I stood? No, then you'd be uncomfortable and I'd get uncomfortable and then I'd forget what it is I want to say. Yes, but butlers don't just walk into their young mistress's bedrooms. Godfrey, mind your language. I'm sorry, miss. There, now, that's better. And besides, you don't have to worry too much around here about what is or what isn't done. No matter how it may look to anyone, we are not what you might call the ordinary average American family. Well, that is a point that needed clearing up. You know your coat doesn't fit too well. Well, I had to rent it this morning. I didn't... Well, why don't want... you take it off and let me see it? I beg your pardon? Take your coat off. Well, if you insist, miss. You know, as soon as I get my hands on some cash, I'll get you a new outfit. If you're going to be my protege, I'm going to have to dress you better than this. Your protege? Well, sure, like... Stan. Like Vincent is to Mother. She sponsors him and sees that he gets enough to eat and all like that. And then he doesn't have to work, which gives him more time to practice. Which, of course, he never does. And that sort of makes a difference, you see. I see. Now, if you'll excuse me. Where are you going? Oh, I have my duties to perform, miss. If someone were to ring for me and I didn't answer, then as you're my sponsor, it would reflect on you, you see. That's very true. Godfrey, oh, your coat. Thanks. Thank you. Godfrey. Yes, miss? If you didn't have a kangaroo when you were a little boy, what did you have? Just a parrot. Uh, all it ever said was Merry Christmas. Ah. Uh, and what do you say the rest of the year? Nothing. Poor Godfrey. Thank you, miss. Good morning, sir. Haven't I seen you someplace before? At your party last night, sir. Huh? I, I'm a little less bearded now. What were you doing in my daughter's bedroom? Serving her breakfast, sir. With your coat off? Your daughter insisted, sir. 
I'm the new butler. New butler? Who hired you? I did. He's my protege. And if anyone lays a single hand on All him... All right, where have you worked before? Where are you your references? You don't have to answer that. This is a free country. Irene, go to your room. I huh? will not. Please, Miss Irene, Mr. Bullock has every right to... No, ask. he does not. Irene... He's only trying to intimidate I'm you. I'm warning you. You come with You me. leave him alone. You have no right to cross-examine anyone just because he once wore a beard. I hired Godfrey. I'm responsible for... Now then. Do you have any references? No, sir. I've only just arrived in this country, and this is my first situation. Where are you from? Don't answer that either. Stand on your Fifth Amendment. He's from Australia, so what? She means Austria. I don't care what she means. If you think I'm going to take a perfect stranger into this... Stranger? House. Now, you listen to me. I know I've threatened to do this many, many times before, but this time I really mean it. Either you let Godfrey stay, or I go straight to the newspapers and tell them you got your start in white slavery. And the way I'll tell it, they'll believe me. Get out of here. Now, here's $50 for your How trouble. How dare you offer him money? Godfrey feels that there are many, many more important things in life than money. Miss Irene, please believe me. I do appreciate very much what you're trying to do for me, but I think under the circumstances, I'd better leave. If he goes, I go. You bet your life you go. You go straight up to your room this minute. You've never cared anything about me anyway. Cordelia always gets anything she wants. But just let me want one little thing like a, a butler I can talk to or someone I can feel at home with and... All right, he can stay. He must be out of my mind. Oh, nobody's perfect, Dad. Thank you, uh, Godfrey, sir. Thank you, Godfrey, sir. I'm most grateful for what you did for me. Oh, I told you no one would pick on you while I'm your sponsor. Oh, and look, now we've got the cash for your new outfit. Good morning, Miss Cordelia. I know that man. Well, bully for you. And remember this, he's my butler. You keep your hands off of him, understand? Tomatoes, cucumber, celery, caviar, and caviar. We must have ordered at least 12 cases of caviar just since I came here. I know, and if there's one man in the whole world who thinks I'm the cutest thing alive, it's our grocer. Which just goes to prove that old saying, if you can't get affection at home, you may have to go shopping for it. How much money have you put in the bank since you started with the Bullocks? Not one red cent. Oh, no, Molly. I don't trust banks. One day, I'm going to have to make an honest woman out of you. Well, by that, I hope you don't only mean you'll cure my feeling. I see Cinderella's stepsister's up and prowling. I wonder why she rang for you. I no idea. Well, take this. It's probably what she wants. All right. Oh. You and I could live for about three months on what a silly little thing like this would cost. Together? Oh, I couldn't afford you, Molly. Can I help you, Madame? Oh, oh, God, you, you see, I was just about to go out the front door when I... Do you remember what I was supposed to do today? I'm afraid not, Madame. I know it wasn't the psychiatrist. I saw him yesterday. He said, just keep on knitting. Something to do with the wayward girls? Of course. Today's the day we're going to have them vaccinated. <laughs> I knocked twice and I heard no answer. 
Just a minute. Yes, miss? You can hand me my slippers. Wouldn't it be more proper if Molly came up to help you? Is it customary in Europe for a butler to tell a lady what's proper and what isn't? Oh, in Europe, it is customary for a lady to be attended by a maid rather than by a butler. Well, answer it. Yes. It's for you, miss. Of course it is. The slippers are under the bed. Hello? Oh, hello, Charlie. Oh, thank you for the flowers, darling. They were lovely. Oh, well, I had a wonderful time, too. Can't you find them? No, miss. Oh, well, look under here. Oh, no. No, darling, I was talking to a servant. Oh, it's just the same old servant problem. It's impossible to get anyone of even the slightest intelligence anymore. Oh, put them on. Oh, darling. Darling, you're terrible. Oh, of course not. <laughs> I don't make you nervous, do I? I'm sorry to say you don't. Just a moment, darling. Let me give you a bit of advice for a change. If you want things to be pleasant around here, you'll have to change your attitude. Thank you, miss. The point is well taken. So this is what goes on while I'm at the cleaners. If you ladies will excuse me, I... I told you to keep your dirty hands off of him. And I tell you, if you ever come into my room again, you won't have enough teeth left for a decent smile. Oh, I heard that threat. So from now on, I can hardly be blamed for anything I do to protect my own person. Oh, shut up! Lovely. Lovely, you are so lovely. Lovely, my lovely as can be. Lovely, lovely, heaven above me. You stole my heart, please set it free. I like that, Vincent. What's the name of it? Lovely. Oh, lovely. <laughs> lovely. Well, I must say it fits it perfectly. You and the are words are so, so easy to remember. Lovely. You know, I think maybe that's why lovely the Star Spangled Banner never became lovely. really popular. Yeah. No one could ever remember the word. <laughs> ah, there you are, Godfrey. Would you fix lovely. me a bloody Angelica, please? Very well, madam. Lovely. And Godfrey. Easy on the mustard. Sweet How about the vodka? Oh, there, you may run a mark. Please come and fly. Away with me. Well, what do you think of him? I wouldn't like to meet him on a dark street. Oh, he's trained to kill. Congratulations, miss. Yeah. Kill, boy. Kill. Down. Down, Rasputin. Please tell me why anyone would want a thing like that. For protection. I no longer intend to live in constant terror from threats that have been made upon my life. From now on, anyone who attacks me will have Rasputin to deal with. Oh, Mother, you can't put it off any longer. That girl has gone off her scooter. I'm warning you. You think I'd be afraid of that? You just lay one hand on me and he'll be at your Girls. throat. Girls, this rug has just come back from the cleaners. Play something, Vincent. The way they do to avoid a panic when the theater's on fire. Lovely, lovely, you are so lovely, lovely, my lovely as can be. I must say, I think that's lovely. very rude of you. I'm sorry, Vincent. That I don't have to stand for. Well, uh, oh, go home, go home, you. They just have no ear for music, those. Oh, uh, hello, dear, did you have a nice day at the office? Hi, Dad. I need a drink. I'll fix it for you, sir. Well, I see the whole family's all together in one ro room. I think I'll take advantage of that and discuss a few family matters, if you don't mind, Vincent. Not at all. Oh, now, Alexander, you're not going to bring up a lot of sordid business now. I certainly am. I've just been going over last month's bills. It's bad enough when the government takes 90% of what I make, but when my family spends another 40%. Well, I don't see 
why you want to give the government more than you do your own family. Money, 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 money. There, you see, you're upsetting Vincent. I don't care, and I want you all to know I've been losing a lot of money lately. Maybe you just left it in your other suit. What other suit? That went long ago. If things are really that low, Dad, why don't we try cutting down on the health? Oh, no, you don't. We all pitched in. I'm sure we could get along with just Molly. So help me out. I'll stick him on you, and don't you think I won't? Now, now, strange as it may seem, Cordelia's come up with a concrete suggestion. Maybe we could get along with fewer servants. Why, Alexander Leopold, how can you say such a... Oh, oh darling. Oh! You're upsetting Irene, too, old darling. Oh! But now, we mustn't try to come between Irene and Godfrey. He's the only thing she's shown any affection for since her spaniel died last summer. Oh! Oh! oh. I just have these awful dabbing veins. Oh, if you don't mind, I've already seen oh, this performance. Vincent, play something. Play something gay to cheer her up. I will not. Darling, shall I send for a doctor? Oh, no. No, it'll pass. I'll just lie here. I'll have my dinner in my room. Get rid of that animal. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh. He didn't have the decency to let Vincent sing. Smart dog. He can stay. I wonder what he meant by that. Oh, Godfrey. Oh, Mother, why don't you and Vincent have dinner? I'll just lie here for a moment until I feel better. Darling, I don't like to leave you alone. Oh, no, Godfrey will stay with me. Won't you, Godfrey? Oh, yes, that's a splendid oh. idea. Sit down beside her, Godfrey, so she can look at you and touch you. Vincent, you come with me. Take heart, darling. Godfrey. Yes, miss? How many are having dinner? Just two. Vincent and who else? Mrs. Bullock. Well, lucky I only cooked for 15. Hey, you're bleeding. It's only a scratch. You went that away. How do you know who I'm looking for? Oh, it was tough, but I finally figured it. Godfrey! Godfrey! I need some fresh towels in my bathroom. my room. Well, sure, where else? You know, it's funny. The first day you came, you were sitting on my bed. Now I'm sitting on yours. I would overlook that rather startling coincidence, and I'm afraid you must leave. What do you want that open for? I'll put this as delicately as I can. Hasn't your mother ever explained to you that some things are proper and some things are not? No. You have to be wayward to get any attention from Mother. Yeah, well, I had nothing as drastic as that in mind. Oh, now you're making fun of me. No, on the contrary, I'd like to be rather serious for a moment. Oh, I wish you would. Miss Ivy, mean, it just seems to me that you don't have much of a life of your own. I mean, haven't there ever been any young men you've been interested in? Oh, don't worry. I've tried that rat race. You tried it? Oh, sure. I've necked in cars. I even got engaged a whole lot for a while. But it always got kind of grimy and depressing. The necking? Why? Well, we never could find anything to talk about, and we'd just sit there. And then my father would get worried that it was going to fall through, and he'd offer to set whoever it was up in business, and whoever it was would run like crazy. Which only gave Cordelia another chance to be really funny and sarcastic. So I finally said, who needs it? You mean, who needs love? Who needs Cordelia knocking herself out at my expense? Oh, look, yes, I mean, if I may, I... I'd like to tell you a little story about a very sentimental young lady with a very kind heart who helped a man who was very grateful. But then she threatened to undo all the fine work she'd done. Oh, God, you made up a story about no, me. I didn't make it up, Miss Irene, and evidently you didn't hear the end. Well, this young lady who'd done all these nice things was now doing other things that might ruin all the nice things that she'd done before. Like what? Like kissing the butler for one thing and coming into his room for another. You mean you don't want me to come into your room? I'm your butler, Miss Irene, and I'm not your host. Well, of all the unhospitality. You beast. You unfeeling beast.
which looks like goose liver. That is a foie. I love it. I can recommend the smoked salmon. That has a dash of vodka on it. Thanks. I'll try it. Mr. Pepper. Uh, yes, Mrs. Pepper. Oh, Mr. Pepper, I don't believe you've met any of our wayward girls, Mr. Pepper. And I think wayward girls are everyone's fault. Miss <laughs> Irene? And that's Lizzie. Uh, no, you're Betty, Archie. You're not. And that's, oh, well, it really doesn't matter. They're all three Elizabeths. We just call them different names so we won't get confused. Oh, I see. <laughs> you know, it's going to take all our support to get them back onto their feet. Oh, oh we'd be delighted to support them. I have an opening in my office. Oh, yes, now, I think it's everyone's duty. Godfrey, Godfrey. Watch the girls carefully whenever they go near the silver, Godfrey. Oh, there you are, Jean Ginder. I think of you. Now, Miss Irene. Thank you. Later, perhaps. <laughs> Godfrey isn't buying, so the whole act is lost. I found out exactly the dress she was going to wear, and I had it copied. Then I walked right up to their table, and I said to the girl, I consider it an insult to her that they sold me the same dress, and that I would take it right off. She would just have to say the word. Well, did she? <laughs> no, but he did. And? <laughs> and so I took it off. In front of everybody? Of course. The prince and I have been close friends ever since. Oh, I <laughs> That reminds me of a story about, about the man who always May wanted I to be invited to a nudist club dinner. <laughs> well, he finally made it. When he arrived, there were clothes piled on the chairs in the hall, and a poker-faced butler helped our friend to <laughs> That's address. very funny. Will you excuse me? So you know Francesca. Who, miss? Francesca Gray. The ex-Mrs. Stratton, the former Mrs. Delahaye, the widowed Mrs. Hendricks, etc., etc. The names are not familiar to me, miss. Oh, come now, Godfrey. You look like a cornered rabbit when you saw it. Rabbit, miss? <laughs> I, I just couldn't believe it. Guess the face You know Godfrey. Of course, we've known each other for years. Forgive me, madam, I didn't recognize you. You've changed your hair. Certainly, I had the great pleasure of working for Madame Gray and her husband many years ago on the Riviera at Cannes, was it not? That's right. How is your husband, madam? <laughs> Which one? Anyone. Jadavan it's okay. Uh, what are you doing here? Uh, Maintenant, je t'expliquerai plus tard. But what are you doing here? I'm the butler, madam. The butler? Strange, oh. you never gave Madame Gray as a reference. <laughs> Francesca, are you enjoying yourself? <laughs> Very much. May I ask, what do you find amusing at this party? <laughs> Him. Godfrey. Well, it seems Godfrey and Francesca are old friends. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Godfrey's always been very mysterious about his past. We know nothing about him. Irene, did you know that Godfrey and Francesca used to be quite close? I would hardly say close, madam. Godfrey was Francesca's butler. Oh. Did you find him satisfactory? Oh, satisfactory. Just barely describes the way I found him. Then why did you let him go? Yes, dear, why did you let him go? I left on my own account, madam. Oh, that's right. I, I just remember. One day, Godfrey came to me and he said, I trust you have found my work satisfactory. And that was that, wasn't it, Godfrey? Oh, those may not have been my exact word, madam, but as you say, that was definitely that. All right, now we've established that was that. What happened next? Oh, well, then I, I did what any well-trained employer would do. I said, Godfrey, if you really feel that your wife and five children need you more than we do, good luck. Five children? It's five, isn't it? Somewhere about that number, madam. Would you excuse me? Why didn't you tell me you had five children? I'm sorry, miss. Oh, now, darling, it's nothing to make a fuss about. But if that woman in South America can have five children, why can't Godfrey? Listen, everybody. I want to make an announcement. I want to announce something. I'm, I want to announce my engagement because I'm going to get married. You're engaged? You're engaged? You're going to be married? Yes, I am. To whom? Oh, well, uh, well, you'll find out soon enough. Not oh, to well, Hubert. Hubert. Yes, yes, to Hubert. Where is he? He's in there. Hubert! Hubert, where's Hubert? You're being paid, Hubert. Hubert, Hubert. Congratulations, old man. What are you talking about? Your engagement. My engagement? To Irene. Oh, Hubert, I'm so happy. Someone just said that I'm engaged to marry what? you. Well, you are, and shut up about Hubert, it. Hubert, Hubert, my boy. Oh, you're always such a shock at first, Hubert. Bless you. <laughs> Cordelia. No, Hubert, that's my mother. I can hear all right. It's my eyes. Godfrey, Godfrey, champagne for everyone on the house. Oh, you don't know, do you, Godfrey? Irene's gone and got herself engaged to Hubert. <laughs> Who thinks I look like Cordelia? Oh, play something appropriate, like the wedding. Miss Irene, I'd like to wish you all the happiness in the world. <laughs> when can I see you? Tomorrow is my afternoon off. Can you meet me around five at the Sirocco? I'll be there. 
when they're full of people. <laughs> now you know. There was a time when you didn't get out of bed until five in the afternoon. <laughs> now I find getting up at the crack of dawn a most invigorating experience. Wait, I... Oh, no, darling. This is my party. Oh, but don't you realize we servants are the new financial aristocracy of America? <laughs> Room and board and $250 a month. <laughs> Two French vermouths with a dash of cassis and soda on the side. Yes, sir. That is right, isn't it? You have a wonderful memory. Pleasant things are hard to forget. Tell me all about yourself. Are you married again? And uh, how many times since <laughs> I saw you? That's an impertinent question. Anyway, no one is interested in my marriages anymore, not even me. Now, what about you? Well, um, four children were all right. But when the fifth one arrived, it was just too many people in one crowded room. <laughs> Come on. No, there's not very much to tell. You know the Bullocks. They're a little crazy, but we knew plenty of people in Europe who were just as crazy as they are. Actually, I've grown quite fond of the Bullocks. So you find it only natural to, to make up their beds, to, to shine their shoes, and to put out their cat. <laughs> their cat happens to be a great big blood. Oh, no, come on. <laughs> Don't change the subject. Why are you playing the butler? I'm not sure I want to tell you that. As a bird McCord in London, he said the last he heard from you were working on a Danish freighter. That's true. I wonder how he found out. What happened between you and Bert? You, you never wrote, and you used to be such good friends. I had a lot of good friends in London, but, you know, wearing a raincoat and carrying an umbrella for ten years doesn't make you into an Englishman, even if you do go to Oxford. When the war started, my father was still with the Austrian embassy in London, and naturally we were given our walking papers and went home. I was drafted. I flew bombers. I might have bombed London. It so happened that I didn't, but I might have done. Somehow, I've never felt like going back there since. Why didn't you stay in Austria? There was nothing to stay there for. My family and all my friends just weren't there anymore. So, I drifted around Europe for a while, and then I decided to burn my bridges and get a breath of fresh sea air. And then you got too much fresh air on your freighter, and, and you decided to jump ship and stay in America. That's right. I was only joking. I wasn't. It's true. I did. I jumped ship. I don't believe it. I fell in love with the Statue of Liberty. But do you realize what will happen to you when they catch up with you? you? You'll be deported, you know that. It's a chance I'll have to take. I like it here very much, don't you? <laughs> How can I complain? <laughs> <laughs> well, here is my luck added to yours. Bless you. Will you do me a big favor? Oh, sure. Anything at all. That has no money connected with it. <laughs> Just go around the corner and telephone this place and ask for Francesca Gray. When you get her on the wire, keep it there. Francesca Gray? What am I supposed to talk about? Oh, I don't know, but you'll think of something. Francesca Gray? <laughs> well, hello, Francesca. Hello, Cordelia. Nice to see you. I'm not in trouble. I didn't know you were entertaining our butler. Oh, but I'm not. He's entertaining me. Really? I always wondered what butlers do with their time off. Well, now you know, don't you, dear? Oh, Godfrey, I hate to intrude on your day off, but this morning I noticed my green dress still hanging in the closet. Why didn't you get it off to the cleaners? Why, Godfrey, you never had any trouble getting my dresses off to the cleaners. I don't know what could have come over me. Telephone call for Miss Francesca Gray. Oh, telephone for you, dear. Has to be Elliot. You know, I could be on the bottom of the ocean and Elliot would still find me and put in a call for me. Elliot? <laughs> He's got $50 million, which would be all right. If he wouldn't always chew his cigar to a pulp. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind if I sit down? I feel that on my afternoon off, I should have the privilege of choosing my friends. Oh, I naturally assume that since you didn't mind having a drink with your ex-employer... Madame Gray, besides being my ex-employer, also happens to be an old friend. Oh, and which two husbands were you fitted in between? Do you mind if I tell you something? Please do. As someone you met in a bar or as your butler? Oh, 
Choose your own weapons. Thank you. You fall into that unfortunate category that I would describe as the Park Avenue brat. A spoiled child brought up in ease and luxury and always given her own way. As a matter of fact, you shouldn't really be allowed out in public until someone has taught you the basic rules of good taste and good manners. You're going to regret this. Waiter? Yes, sir. Chip, please. There you are, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. It wasn't Elliot at all. It was some character. He wanted me to come up and see his collection of shrunken heads. <laughs> Probably a distant cousin of your employer. Thank you, sir. Did you get rid of her? She was suddenly taken with an acute attack of embarrassment and had to leave. Good. What do we do now? Let's go somewhere and spend all my salary. Wonderful. Oh, but let's go through the back. I'm sure Elliot's Royce Royce is in front. And I don't mind being followed by men. But Royce Royce has <laughs> always embarrassed me. <laughs> Sounds like love. And he says it's hard to know what it is. <laughs> Hasn't come back yet, has he? Not yet. Would you mind putting these flowers in his room? I can't go in there anymore. I can't either. Did he kick you out too? Yep. Does the man want out of life? He told me one time. What? Peace and quiet. Oh. Is this his shirt? Yes. Do you always sew his buttons on? Sometimes. He doesn't lose very many. <laughs> He's very tidy, isn't he? Had a park house on Penn's Avenue, but her willpower was weak, and her yacht sprung a leak. Da 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 da, wouldn't you? Ooh, ooh, ooh. No caviar for you for three days. Ladies? You better get some wood for the living room fireplace, Godfrey. I should be diluted. Deleted. You should be deloaded. Right. Park house on Penn's Avenue. I think I better help him. Yeah, I will too. Upstairs he's yours. Downstairs he's mine. Well, I don't care. I think it's just terrible the way some men treat their families. There's a story here about a man who drowned his wife in the bathtub. Well, maybe it was the only way he could get her to take a bath. Since you seem to have an answer for everything, tell us, what are we going to do with you? Why do you always pick on Vincent? Why don't you pick on someone else for a change? May I please finish reading my newspaper? Hmm. It isn't Vincent's fault that you're in a bad mood. <laughs> What's the matter, darling? Oh, you wouldn't understand. I don't know why you always say that. You and Cordelia seem to think just because I've only been married once, I don't know anything about life. Tails. Did you cut them off? Oh, sorry, madam. I just didn't have time to change. I apologize. Well, no need to apologize. That's very becoming to you. Well, thank you, madam. And if I may say so, you seem to look younger every day, if I say may so. Well, you certainly may. And thank you very much. Don't you have anything to say to me? To you, Miss Irene? Yes. As Mr. Vincent's song so aptly expresses it, lovely, lovely, you are the... Pardon me. Oh, isn't he sweet? If you ask me, he's drunk. Must a man be drunk just because he pays us a compliment? Aren't we ever going to eat around here again? Oh, you sounded just like Vincent, then. Oh! oh, dear. What's that? Oh, I hope it wasn't the big yellow vase or the fawns frolicking on it. 
No matter, but it was the, the green one with the cupids capering on it. Oh. Thank you, Godfrey. One does what one can, sir. The green one? Yes, yeah, the one the Shepperton's gave us last Christmas. I always meant to thank them for it. It's too late now. 32 Georgia Street, Elmhurst. You have that? And please hurry. sure you took it off in your room? Oh, yes, I'm quite sure of that. No, she takes off something here, she takes off something there. Look, nobody asked you, young lady. If you're going to be rude to my daughter, you might at least remove the cigar from your mouth. I'm, I'm afraid we're all a little upset by this thing. Yeah, Senator. well, who's that? Is he your son? Now, listen here, I've been blamed for a lot of things in my life, but... Who are you? No relation whatsoever. Oh, no need to suspect Molly. She's been with us forever. No, ma'am, it just seems that way sometimes. Who else lives in this house? Well, there's Godfrey, of course. Who's Godfrey? He is the best butler we have ever had. Well, I'm sure Godfrey didn't take it. Oh, of course, we don't know very much about him. Godfrey wouldn't touch that old bracelet of yours with a fork. Now, just a minute. What do you mean you don't know very much about him? Well, what I mean is we didn't get him from an employment agency, and he didn't have any references, and we've never been able to find out who he is or where he came from. Oh, or you're it. all on the wrong track. It's just silly to think of Godfrey wearing a diamond bracelet. Yeah, well, just the same. I think we'd like to talk to him. Where is he? Well, he's very ill, and he's in his room. He's loaded. I'll show you the way, gentlemen. Oh, oh no. Godfrey! Get rid of it! That's his room over there. Go out the window. They're after you, but I won't let them get you. Oh, come in. Come in, everybody. Come oh, in. Godfrey, I'm terribly sorry. I don't believe in breaking into anybody's room, but this is Lieutenant O'Connor, and he wants to ask you some questions. I'm delighted to meet you, Lieutenant. All right, now, what do you know about this diamond bracelet that's missing? Nothing. He's never even heard of it. Nothing? Oh, yeah, I told you. I told you so, too, remember? What's your name? His name is Godfrey. Godfrey, and his middle initial is G, which stands for Godfrey, too. So there. Where are you from? Don't answer that. I asked you a question. Are you English? No, I'm not. Are you Canadian? Well, suppose he is. Is that a crime? Well, of course not. We have to check up on him. Where did you work before you came here? Where did you work before? For the Spanish Inquisition? Irene, will you keep quiet and let these no, men finish I will their not. business? Godfrey, do you mind if we search your room? He certainly does mind. Don't you dare let them search your room. I insist that you search my room. Why? Excuse me, please. You don't mind if I um, go on looking at the fights? No, you? no, go right ahead. Oh, pardon me, please. <laughs> Right to the head, and another right to the head, and a left to the midsection, and another, and another right, and a left, and another right to the midsection, and a left to the head, and a right to the midsection. Oh, no. Well, he never did have a chance anyway. What do you mean he never had a chance? I had ten bucks on that boy. Have you retired from the force, Grogan? Uh, no, sir. Don't be so sure. Now, go on. Tonight, one of the greatest... Oh, pardon me, sir. Well, it's not here. Fine. I, I knew it wouldn't be. Uh, Godfrey, I'd like to apologize. Why don't you look under the mattress? Well, it's not there either. Well, of course, that's just the place I'd pick. Pardon me. Excuse me. Nope. But it has to be there. Why does it have to be there? Cordelia, what are you trying to pull? I'd like to speak to you gentlemen outside, if you don't mind. I'm terribly sorry, Godfrey. Oh, we're all terribly sorry, Godfrey. Come along, Cordelia. It's perfectly all right, madam. It's a pleasure. Well, I'll be right back. I just want to see what Dad's going to do to Cordelia. Looking under people's mattresses. 
Boys, I, I want to apologize for my family. Well, that's all right, sir. We can see what you're up again. Oh, and I'd like to send you a little check for your pension fund. Well, that's very nice of you. And look, don't worry about the butler. We'll check up on him and let you know. Oh, by the way, I had $200 on that boy who got knocked out tonight. <laughs> Now, what have you got to say for yourself? Well, aren't they going to do anything more about it? No, and it's a good thing for you they're not. There's something I want to tell you. If you don't find your bracelet, the joke's on you, because it's not insured. Ah, oh, poor Cordelia lost her bracelets. Irene, do you know that I ran into Godfrey and Francesca having cocktails together at the Sirocco this afternoon? They were having quite a time. That's a lie. Call me a liar. I'll call you anything I please. And you'd better stay away from me or I'll sick that dog on you. Go on. Go on, just touch me. He'll tear you to pieces. Harder. Whoa! Oh, you... Stop it! Get off of me! Oh, don't... Rasputin! Leave him out of this! You shut up! Will you do something? Stop oh, him. oh you, you, you stop that. I will not. Oh, I'll knock your teeth out. Red Putin, do you? Come in. Will you get another glass, Godfrey? I beg your pardon, sir? I want you to have a drink with me. I hope we're still on speaking terms. Of course, sir. Tell me, Godfrey, is uh, everything all right with you? Oh, yes, thank you, sir. I had a cold shower and I feel much better now, sir. Oh, no, I, I didn't mean that. Those detectives who were here tonight told me they were going to check up on you. Now, if there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. That's very kind of you, sir, but I should be all right. Just wanted you to know. Uh, Pull up a chair. Sit down. You know, you've been with us for quite a while now. Why do you stay on? I have to. You don't. I just thought that perhaps in some small way I might make life a little easier for you all. Smooth things over. Well, you've done that. You know, I've been sitting here wondering if Cordelia has any idea of the downright viciousness of what she tried to do tonight. You see, I've been so preoccupied with my business that, well, the girls were grown up before I knew it. I wonder how old that excuse is. You mustn't blame yourself, sir. And the funny thing, or maybe it isn't funny, is that after all the years I've devoted to my business, now I'm going to lose that, too. Well, not really, sir. Well, I'm not telling you anything that the whole country won't know this time next week. Surely there must be something you can do. If there is, I haven't thought of it. How much would it take? Oh, half a million. You mean to the banks, of course? Most of the time, banks won't let you have any money, unless you can prove you don't need it. Well, I, I didn't I don't want to burden you with my problems, Godfrey. I, I just wanted to apologize again for what happened tonight. Oh, don't let it get you down. Something will turn up. I'm sure it will, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, Godfrey. That is an awful lot of money you are talking about. Yes, it's an awful lot of money. Do you really think you can get me out of bed at this hour in the morning and make the slightest sense about anything? Maybe things will look a little brighter if you took those glasses off. <laughs> After a sleepless night, men go to the steam room and women wear dark glasses. <laughs> Not that I can't get that money for you. Elliot is on the boards of more banks than you can name. But you just have to approach him the right way. 
Well, it wouldn't amount to much, but I'm willing to put up some property I still have in Austria. <laughs> Why not throw in your title? He's welcome to it. <laughs> Darling, there is only one thing Elliot doesn't have, and that's me. My neck wouldn't hurt so much, I would turn around and show you his Royce Royce following us. Well, is he there? That's right behind us. Poor darling, he has such a time keeping up with me. Oh, driver, please slow down. I don't want to upset Elliot. You really have grown very fond of that family, haven't you? Sort of. All of them? Some of them. Well, I see what I can do. Now, look. I'm not going to let you marry somebody just to help me out. You know that, don't you? Darling, no one lets a woman marry anyone or even talks her into it. I have made up my mind weeks ago to marry Elliot. And there is no law which says that I can't do what I want to do and also benefit by it. <laughs> of course, I still might sue you for damages for getting me up <laughs> at this hour in the morning just for that. <laughs> that Rolls Royce definitely cramps my style. How am I ever going to thank you? No undying gratitude, please. All right. Stop when you get round the corner, will you please? I have to go back and polish the silver. If you ever want another job, Elliot has loads of silver. Thank you, and not only for that. Goodbye. Good luck. I'll be the first to congratulate you, Mr. Elliot. Oh, you're home. Good. Oh, is there something you want, Miss Irene? No. I just missed you. I always miss you when you're not home. Oh, well, that's very sweet of you. I had some things to do myself today, and when I got home, you weren't here. What things did you have to do? Oh, I had to have my toenails lacquered, and then I had to sell Rasputin. Oh, took a terrible loss. But it didn't really, because the man who bought him didn't know he wouldn't bite anybody. Can I help you do something? Oh, please don't. No, I like to help you. I wish we could do everything together. Oh, that'd be fine, as long as I don't have to have my toenails lacquered. <laughs> oh, God, you have a wonderful sense of humor. I wish I had a sense of humor. Only I never can think of anything to say until everybody's gone home. Miss Irene, there's something I want to tell you. What? Oh, well, first of all, I want you to know how grateful I am. For what? for everything you've done for me. Oh. And then there's something that probably may upset you, but just the same, I'm going to tell you. What? I think it's time that I was moving on. You're going back to them. Back to who? To that wife of yours and all those children. You didn't really believe that, did you? Francesca said it. She's just making it up. Was she really? Absolutely. And where are you going? To Francesca, that's it. You're in love with Francesca. No, I'm not in love with Francesca. I'm moving on because, well, I want to improve myself. After all, I am your protege, and you do want me to improve, don't you? Yes. I mean, you don't want me to be just a butler all my life. I want you to be anything you want to be. When are you leaving? Oh, probably pretty soon. I wanted you to be the first to know because... Well, we've always trusted each other, haven't we? Yes, we have. Well. If we simply must have kidneys, put them through the meat grinder and make them into some sort of a shape so that they wouldn't look so, you know, exactly like what they are. Would you like, madam? I think it's depressing to eat the insides of animals. Or are we that hard up? Alexander, I asked you a question. The answer is yes, we are. No, thank you. Oh, look at the poor child. Well, I don't wonder she doesn't eat. Don't be surprised if I never eat again. I will, too, be surprised. I hope you don't think I consider that a normal behavior from a person. Maybe her stomach is upset. Will you leave her alone? Vincent will eat enough for both of them. Oh, now, Alexander, you know Vincent has to eat to keep up his strength for his concert. He could give a bang-up concert right now with a knife and fork. Oh, why do you always pick on Vincent? Why don't you pick on someone else for a change? Telephone for you, Mr. Bullock. Uh, Mr. Elliot. Who? Mr. James P. Elliot.
Yes? Yes, Mr. Elliot? Oh, no, 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 you're not disturbing me at all. I... Uh, you mean that? Well, uh, no, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. That's... Well, yes, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll be in your office at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, thank you very much. I... I beg your pardon. Who? Why, yes, he's right here, Godfrey. Uh, Mr. Elliot wants to speak to you. Sir? James P. Elliot. To me, sir. Well, that's what he said. Uh, could you? Thank you. Yes? Oh, I'm delighted to hear that, sir. May I wish you all the very best? Oh, that was nothing. <laughs> no, really, nothing. Oh, you're very kind. I beg your pardon? Oh, that's my first name. Oh, well, thank you. And good luck to you, too, James. Would you like to speak to Mr. Bullock again? I'll tell him. Goodbye, Jim. What, what, what did Jim, uh, uh, Mr. Elliot, want you to tell me? He said you were not to worry, sir. The loan is as good as yours. Oh, excuse me. Oh, he told me you were responsible for his decision. Is that true? Only in a very roundabout way, sir. I just wanted to repay you for everything you've done for me. Oh, we've done nothing. Oh, you accepted me at face value, sir. That's a very rare thing these days. Well, why shouldn't we have accepted you? <laughs> why, you're such a gentleman. We've learned a lot from you. And I've learned a lot from you, madam. From me? From my wife? Oh, yes, sir. But for Mrs. Bullock, I've learned that there's a great deal of satisfaction to be derived from helping other people. Now, oh, now, there, you see, Godfrey has something nice to say about Vincent. Oh, no, no, dear. I think he was referring to your wayward girls. Oh, them. Well, it just goes to show that Godfrey has something nice to say about everyone. That's why we're all so fond of him, aren't we? What else have we taught you? From you, sir, I've learnt patience and sincerity. Patience? Well, thank you, Godfrey. And from you, Miss Cordelia. Maybe it would be kinder to skip me. Oh, no, miss, I've learnt a lot from you. One thing I probably needed very badly, humility. And from you, I've also learned the foolishness of arrogance and the folly of dishonesty. This is yours, isn't it? Why, it's Cordelia's bracelet. Oh, then you did steal it after all. I think perhaps Miss Cordelia would like to explain. What is all this? I, I put it under the mattress myself, Mother. Thank you, Miss. I hoped you'd say that. Why? Why would you? Oh, never mind. And now, if I may, I'd like to say a word to Miss Irene. Well, you don't have to say anything to me. I know you're going away. You what? I was about to explain. You're going away? Yes, Miss Cordelia, to Europe. Oh, no, but this isn't the season for Europe. Uh, why don't you... Uh, why don't you wait until summer? Then maybe we could all go together. I'm afraid I can't wait that long, madam. I, I have personal reasons. Oh, but you're, you're coming back. Oh, I shall try very hard, sir. And now, since I should be leaving tomorrow morning, I've taken the liberty of hiring a replacement. You mean you're not going to serve us our last breakfast? I'm afraid not, madam. I shall be leaving before noon. Now, if I may be excused. I wish someday somebody would be as upset when I leave. Vincent, I'd like to have a little talk with you. Uh, well, let's take a walk. Vincent hasn't finished eating. I know, neither have I. But you don't mind, do you, Vincent? You know, for some time now, Vincent, I haven't... What's happened? What's happened, Alexander? What did you say to Vincent? Oh, dear, he left in such a hurry. I, I didn't get a chance to say anything except goodbye. Would you be good enough to get my brown wool dress out of the closet? I've been to Europe before, and I know how cold it gets there in the wintertime. Even at the biggest hotels, let alone the smaller ones, where we're going to stay. You know, I even thought of bringing along an electric blanket. Because all those outlets in Europe have such funny holes. Would you say we? Wouldn't it be a good idea if we took along some of the smaller suitcases, so we could leave the larger ones at a central location? Do you have any and... idea that you're going with me? Oh, no. 
Well, I can go anywhere I want to and with anyone I want to. Irene, now sit down and listen to me. I will not sit down and I'm sick of listening For to you. For one moment. Talk, talk, talk. All I ever get from you is a lot of talk. Well, I'm not that stupid. You can't treat me like a teenager who needs a good talking to. I'm grown up. Then why don't you act grown up? Go on, get mad. Go on, lose your temper. Do you know what's the matter with you? Shut up! Sit down. Now listen to me. It's absolutely impossible for you to come with me. And that has nothing whatever to do with whether or not I want you to come with me. Oh, sure. That's always a handy excuse. I'm not trying it? to make excuses. I haven't told you this before, but the night you found me under the bridge, I jumped ship. I have nothing. I have no passport, no visa, nothing. A very small matter. We've got a little man downtown who gets us all the passports and visas we need. And he only charges about five dollars a piece or something. And I'm, I'm sure he won't charge you any more. He wouldn't if I was an American, but I'm not. Don't you understand? I'm in this country illegally. And if the immigration people find out about that, I shall be deported. And if that happens, I will never be able to come back. Well, I won't let them deport you. I'll hide you. Oh, you get in a lot of trouble doing that. But I don't mind being in trouble if you are. Miss Irene, I know you want to help me. But you won't let me help you. Nobody will let me help them because they say I only make matters worse. Now, is that really true? Sometimes it is, yes. But I just want so much to be loved. I think that's what everybody wants. Well, then why don't people try to love people more? Maybe they don't know how to do that. Oh, I think it's only because they won't, they won't take the time. They're so busy doing other things, like Mother and Dad are. Well, I'm not busy doing anything. I want to give you all my love. I wish I could accept it. I know I'm not as attractive as Cordelia. My nose is too small and I'm too little and... I know I talk an awful lot. I have a funny kind of voice. I think you're a very wonderful girl. Will you do something for me? Will you be quiet now and let me go and not try to hold me and not ask any more questions? And don't tell anybody about what we've said. <laughs> Goodbye, Miss Irene. And I wish you all the happiness. Bye, Godfrey. never heard of such a thing. The butler telling the family he works for they have to be dressed and downstairs for breakfast by 9 o'clock every morning. And the family doing it. Godfrey never made us get up at any particular hour. It's not going to kill this family to act like normal, healthy people for a while. You side with the butler against your own flesh and blood? Well, maybe you'll change your mind when I tell you for the entire two days he's been here, Every time I open my mouth to say any little thing, Franz would turn and looks at me as if I were crazy. Farnsworth, I've decided to have breakfast in bed tomorrow morning. And don't come up until I have buzzed you twice. There, you see the way he looked at me? Mr. Bullock. Yes? 
There are two gentlemen to see you. One of them is that detective. <gasps> Maybe they have news of Vincent. If they have, so help me, I'll never pay another cent of taxes. Good. But now he turned himself in as they're shipping him out on a Dutch freighter this afternoon. He was crazy about it here. Why would he give himself up? He told the immigration inspector that he was beginning to feel he shouldn't accept the hospitality of our country while he was breaking one of our laws. Irene, did you know about this? Why didn't you say something? Well, he made me promise. And nothing could make me break a promise to Godfrey. Now, surely there's something that I could do. I, I mean, I could vouch for him. I could guarantee him a job, a post, a bond, something. Unfortunately, although he carries an Austrian passport, he was born in Romania, and that quota has been filled for literally years ahead. Well, thank you, Mr. Bullock. This was just a routine check. We want to account for all of his time while he was here. That means, then, that Godfrey won't be able to come back here. Oh, I doubt it. Isn't there a law? That if one should marry an American citizen... Well, yes. We had a case the other day of a young man from Czechoslovakia who was trying to get a non-quota visa. Did he? Yes. We had our suspicions that the marriage wasn't on the level, but once they got down to the city hall and set up housekeeping, well, it would be pretty hard to prove. Then if Godfrey could find an American girl who was willing to marry him, he could return to this country. Sure, but it's a little late for that, isn't it? Well... Irene. Irene. Irene! Oh, have you seen my daughter? I don't work here anymore. I wasn't going to wait much longer. This all your luggage, sir? That's all, yes. Take that down to number seven. Here are his papers. Oh, thank you. Well, good luck. Thank you for everything. Sorry everything didn't work out for you. But we don't make the laws. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ready? Yes, sir. see your driver's license. Will you go away? Godfrey, don't you want to marry me? I do. But I don't want people to say that I married you. I don't want people to say that I married you just so I can stay in America. Oh, I don't care what people say. I don't, I don't care why or how, but oh, just so long as you do. I'll come back. 
When will you come back? As soon as I can, I promise. Yeah. All right, where's your license? And the registration slip. What'd I do wrong? Oh, not much. You went 90 in a 25-mile zone, went the wrong way on a one-way street, skipped three traffic signals, and hit a mailbox. Oh. Well, I can't see very well. All right, they're here. Why'd you let him get away? Well, what'd you want me to do, swim after him? You know, there's a tug goes out and picks up the harbor pilot from that boat. A tug about where? Pier 9. Oh, we'd never make it. I've got a siren, and this time you follow me. Young man, do you know your Bible? The Bible? Uh, I believe it says, uh, and if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. Exodus chapter 22. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure you're right. Good heavens, man. I was young once. I've had my fling. You can't get a girl into trouble and then run out on her. You just can't do that. Especially when she's as pretty as that one. You mean she's here? The pilot boat brought her along. And she told you that the whole story. No. If she weren't an orphan, I might have sent her back to her parents. But that girl had a tough time. I started as a cabin boy. I know what it is to wash dishes for a living. You look like a decent man, and she seems to be an honest girl. I don't think you'll be making a mistake. Where is she now? Right outside. And I told her I'll be glad to marry you as soon as we are out of American waters. And I'm telling you, the champagne is on me. What do you say? Can I speak to her alone, please? Why, of course. But remember, be nice to her. She didn't come after you because she was desperate. She really loves you. Miss Bullock. Come inside and shut the door. Now, what is all this about you being an orphan and washing dishes and anything else you made up about us? I didn't make up anything. It's all true. You see, Godfrey, when you left, I had to leave too, so I really am an orphan now. And do you remember when I told you if, if you were in trouble, I wanted to be in trouble too? And if you can't find a job, I don't care. I'll wash dishes or, or something. When did the captain say we'd be out of American waters? About two hours. Do you think you can wait that long? <laughs> 